Thank you so much for the invitation to cover the whole of HPV immunology in 15 minutes. No problem at all. Um, so obviously, this is going to be a little bit selective. I'm mainly going to focus on the T cells, which I think are particularly central um, to trying to achieve functional cure. Um, those are my disclosures. And um, this is the central problem that we're dealing with in chronic hepatitis B. We have a massive depletion of T cells in numbers. And the T cells that remain are poorly functional, so um, are no longer as able to produce uh, cytokines and cytotoxic molecules in order to control hepatitis B. And, um, and what we're trying to ask is, is it feasible to recover this endogenous T cell response? Is it safe? How are we going to do it? And in whom should we be even trying to do this? And um, I've tried to address all these questions with an up-to-date review, which is coming out very shortly. So um, you might like to have a look at that soon. <clears throat> so why is there such a problem with immune control in persistent infection? We think that there's a, a couple of dual factors that are driving the failure of the immune system. One is the persistent high antigen load. And remember that this is not just the number of infected hepatocytes, which is, can be a very large percentage of the liver infected. The duration of infection is exceptional in this infection because most, uh, a lot of um, patients with chronic infection have been inf infected for decades. But also the uh, production of subviral particles uh, increases the antigen load. And this might be a direct effect of uh, and more antigen being processed in the liver and presented to the T cells. But it is possible also that the circulating subviral particles can have some indirect sabotaging effect on the immune response. So there's this factor, and then there's the tolerogenic liver environment, which um, all the hepatologists know is, is a, a very important factor in modulating immunity. The liver is well known to be uh, uh, highly tolerogenic, and it's got a number of specialized immune cells that can shape immunity. And this is probably related to the fact that it receives its blood supply from the portal vein partly, and so it's bombarded with a lot of gut, gut antigens, and it's adapted in order to minimize immune responses. So these two factors in combination are critical for impairing immunity. Um, although I'm going to mainly focus on T cells in this brief talk, it's important to remember, as already pointed out, that there's profound immune defects throughout uh, the different compartments that are relevant here. So B cells have been really understudied in this infection, but it's becoming clear that they also have multiple defects in hepatitis B. We published a few years ago a paper showing that they're um, able to produce IL-10 and can therefore contribute to the down regulation of T cells. Um, but we've also got some unpublished work showing that the classical memory B cells that you need in order to produce a good neutralizing antibody response are being replaced with an unusual atypical population of B cells, which is poorly able to produce antibodies. What about NK cells? There's plenty of NK cells in the liver. Their, their numbers are massively in, enriched compared to the blood. And we know that they have, in theory, the potential to exert antiviral function. They can produce cytokines like interferon gamma, which have potent anti-HBV activity. Why can't they take over and do the job in chronic HBV? Well, it turns out that they also have defective functions. So multiple studies have shown that they're poorly able to produce interferon gamma in chronic HBV infection. Not only that, but it, it turns out that NK cells start to contribute to the problem. So rather than fighting against the virus, they start to fight against the virus-specific T cells. And um, what we've shown is that the NK cells upregulate death ligands, which allow them to actually delete virus-specific T cells within the liver. Um, and in particular, the trail pathway is very relevant in this. So um, there's a population of liver resident NK cells that we've recently defined that doesn't recirculate into the blood. It's compartmentalized uniquely in the liver, upregulates trail in HBV infection. And this death ligand allows them to then interact with HBV-specific T cells, which specifically upregulate the trail R2 receptor, death receptor which makes them then susceptible to being deleted within that liver environment where those cells, remember, are being brought into very close, prolonged contact within the liver sinusoids. And there's further work from Carla Ferrari's group and our group showing that this is also a relevant mechanism for the deletion of CD4 T cells. <clears throat> those T cells that are not deleted by... Um, pro-apoptotic mechanisms, such as the upregulation of BIM that we described a number of years ago, or the deletion by NK cells, are then 
driven to exhaustion by all these negative immunoregulatory signals in the liver. So this is a combination of uh, co-inhibitory pathways like PD-1, which you all know about, but also immunoregulatory cytokines like IL-10 and TGF-beta, highly prevalent in the liver. And I've just mentioned a few of our publications here, but there's many groups who've done important work defining the molecular pathways that regulate T cells in the HPV liver. So how can we overcome this? Well, this is going to be covered in more detail by Andre, um, but I just wanted to mention uh, some recent work that we've done looking at the cytokine IL-12, which is an important third signal cytokine for rescuing exhausted T cells. And um, what Anna Zurich and my group showed was that IL-12 is in combination with PD-1 blockade is the most consistent strategy at being able to rescue HPV-specific T cells in vitro, better than either PD-1 blocking alone or IL-12 alone. And an interesting way that this might work is by overcoming mitochondrial defects. So it's becoming clear uh, in immunology generally that the metabolic response is critical for allowing an effective immune response to be mounted. T cells have to shape and, and reorganize their immunity very profoundly in order to be able to clonally expand fast enough to fight a virus. And to do that, they need to be able to metabolize glucose and amino acids very effectively. Um, and it, and um, what Anna discovered was that the T cells are unable to utilize um, oxidative phosphorylation which is required for efficient energy production. And this seems to be due to an underlying defect in mitochondria. So this is uh, an important potential future target, is going beyond the, the surface regulators that we've been looking at so far, like PD-1 and CTLA-4, and looking intracellularly at the molecular pathways that are disturbed. Um, there's work coming through from uh, um, John Wary's group, for example, showing the same type of defects in LCMV infection, and um, the study from Carlo Ferrari's group, again, using a, an unbiased approach, highlighted mitochondrial dysfunction as one of the key underlying features of the defective T cell response in HPV. So instead of trying to uh, just block some of the negative signals that the T cells are receiving, can we go deeper and target the uh, recovery of the mitochondria? So I've mentioned that IL-12 is one way that we think you could potentially do this. Um, and Carlo's work shows that actually using mitochondrial antioxidants, such as MitoQ and MitoTempo, which have actually already been safely used in, in hepatitis C infection, could, again, help to rescue the T cell response and allow it to fight the virus better. <clears throat> Another metabolic pathway that we've recently highlighted is the, the myeloid-derived suppressor cells. Um, this population expands in the HPV-infected liver, and, and how it works, we think, is by depriving T cells of another key nutrient that they need. So um, this was worked by Laura Pallet in my group, showing that there's a very striking expansion of these GMDSC, these suppressive populations, um, and um, they're further enriched in the liver. So if you compare the blood and liver in these paired samples, the frequency, the immunosuppressive capacity of these cells, the ability of them to produce this enzyme arginase is all increased in the liver. The enzyme arginase then breaks down the amino acid arginine, and arginine, it turns out, is required for T cells to be able to expand and proliferate and mount an effective immune response. So by starving those T cells of arginine, the suppressive population is able to downregulate immunity. So this is just summarized here. The MDSCs produce a lot of arginase 1. This depletes the extracellular arginine and starves T cells. And a recent paper from Lanzavecchi's group showed that T cells also have high levels of the enzyme arginase 2 within them. So they're constantly depleting their stores of arginine. And that's why they're so dependent on bringing in more arginine from the environment. And without that, they're unable to proliferatively expand and mount an antiviral response. So this brings us to the question of, will it be safe to boost immunity in HPV? There's always going to be this trade-off between immunity and immunopathology, because HPV itself, remember, is a non-cytopathic virus. The resultant liver disease is all immune-mediated. Um, and for example, the CD8 T cells are able to both mediate protection, but also to initiate liver injury. And so it seems that hep hepatitis flares are probably going to be an inevitable result of any effective immune boosting. And they're probably not something to be avoided completely, but to be uh, carefully monitored and regulated. And the ways that we could try to make this safer would be to minimize the antigen load before boosting the T cells, 
And so we really need to understand much more about the extent of infected hepatocytes um, so that we can really select the patients who have good liver reserve. Obviously, we, we do that at the moment just by selecting people who haven't already progressed to cirrhosis, but it would be nice if we had assays that could tell us you know, this patient's only got very limited pools of infected hepatocytes, and there's lots of areas which don't seem to be infected. So a quite aggressive um, tackling of those infected hepatocytes with an immune response is not going to wipe out the whole liver. Um, focusing the T-cell boosting as much as possible on the HPV-specific component would be ideal. And then developing adjunctive approaches that can try to down-regulate or limit the collateral damage. So we don't just have to give steroids, but we can give something a bit more specific to tailor the immune boosting. Um, this was mentioned briefly by Harry. I think we need to think a lot more about which patients we should be targeting in terms of uh, the best chance of boosting immunity, and there's really no consensus on this at the moment. It, it's probably going to vary depending on what strategy we're selecting. At the moment, um, strategies are being tried on patients who are well suppressed on antivirals, or plus or minus have undergone pre prior e antigen seroconversion, and um, there's a move towards also using lo low level carriers off therapy. Um, and these are obviously the safest groups and the ones where the T-cell response is perhaps in the best condition to be boosted. Um, but we should also be considering whether we need to start doing studies in younger patients who are earlier in the course of disease. Um, we know now that HPV integration is occurring very early on in the course of disease, so it makes sense to try to interrupt this as soon as possible. These patients are a major pool of infection uh, through sexual transmission. Um, they do, in fact, have subtle degrees of liver damage, and their immune system may be less exhausted. And then there's the, the chance to also um, try out immunotherapies in patients who've got HPV-related HCC, as was the case with nivolumab, which is a really good opportunity, I think, for some of these more risky immunotherapies where the, the safety profile needs to be very carefully tested um, before moving into HPV monotherapy. So finally, I just want to, um, again, plug the importance of sampling the liver, which Gil covered so nicely. Um, and this is work that we've published very recently about a population of tissue resident T cells, which are, um, it's becoming clear through many studies in, in immunology in mouse and humans are really vital frontline sentinels. So it, it, um, it's now become obvious that many, many T cells don't recirculate into the blood but live in particular organs where they're highly adapted and shaped to function well in that, in that particular milieu. Um, and that these T cells are able to provide the first line of defense um, to dampen down infection in the earlier stages. Um, so um, by having access to, again, paired liver and blood samples, we found that there is such a population forming a large proportion of the T cells in a healthy liver, and as I'll show you, they, they seem to be particularly relevant in HPV infection. So here you can see um, this population of uh, double positive cells. I don't know if I've got a point in there. Yeah. yeah. So these cells here are only present in the liver and they're absent from the blood. And you can see that in large numbers of uh, liver samples, no matter what the source is, whether it's um, healthy liver, pre-implant biopsies, colorectal uh, margins from uh, resections or uh, liver perfusates, we can detect these cells always in the liver and never in the blood. And they have a particular phenotypic and transcriptional profile. <clears throat> What's interesting is that these cells are particularly expanded in HPV infection. So you see here again, they're impaired samples always enriched in the liver, never detected in the blood of HPV patients. They're around three times higher in a cohort of HPV infections compared to healthy donors, but they're only really higher in the patients who've got good HPV control. So their presence in the liver associates, it, associates with immune control. Um, and I just wanted to very briefly show you a few more facts plots. Sorry about this for non-immunologists. Um, but this was so interesting because we, we were able to get hold of um, liver perfusate from a patient who had previously resolved HPV infection. So this is the sort of gold standard of what we're trying to achieve with our functional cures. A patient who 
who's um, S antigen negative. We don't know exactly when they resolved uh, because of the nature of obtaining these perfusates, um, cadaveric perfusates. Um, but when we, because we get enough cells from perfusates, unlike the biopsies, to do multiple pools, this is the first time it's been able to do possible to do this kind of study in HPV, because previously all the work that's been done has just been using a pool of tetramers or a pool of peptides in one well, because you just don't get enough cells to separate them out. And what you can see here is that there's um, really strong responses to all the major envelope, uh, all the major HPV proteins, and particularly, in fact, to the envelope, uh, which we very rarely see in the periphery. So if you sum these up, there's over 10% of the CD8 compartment in this resolved patient is still directed against HPV. And the vast majority of these, in fact, have this tissue resident profile with a, um, a striking production of IL-2 and some other features which we think allow it to maintain functionality in the hostile liver environment. So just to sum up this, the tissue resident T cells, I think, are a very important uh, thing to focus on for HPV cure because um, they, they expand, particularly in HPV patients with good viral control. They have special features that instruct their retention, survival, and rapid non-cytolytic antiviral functions. So they seem to be biased towards cytokine production rather than cytotoxicity. Um, and we've described some signals that are capable of recapitulating their induction in vitro from PBMCs. If you treat them with IL-15 and TGF beta with a two-step signal, you can induce this population. Um, so that's something to bear in mind for uh, immunological studies aiming for functional cure, and it underscores, again, the importance of really including liver sample, sampling in any novel trial of, of functional cure in HPV. Um, so just thanks to my group and funders, and, um, yeah, happy to take any questions. I think we're going to leave that for after.